Hello, my name is Jaru, and today I'm talking about Deltarune. There will be major spoilers for both Deltarune and Undertale, so please play them both before watching this. During my exploration of pixel art and legends of localization, I've had a whole new batch of theories and ideas bubbling to the surface. And the one that I think is perhaps the most interesting is also the most meme-worthy. Sans is is Ness, for all its silliness, actually connected a few dots that might have greater meaning than we initially realized. The only issue is in its conclusion. Sans is most certainly not Ness, but there may be another character who is. This theory is a continuation of my Chris is Des video, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Link is in the description. And even if this topic doesn't interest you, I'd still recommend sticking around, as this is all leading towards something far bigger than anything you are expecting. If you enjoy this video and would like to see the channel stay up and running, please consider supporting me on Ko-fi or Patreon. Through Ko-fi, you can make one-time donations and work towards fun donation goals. For example, we're very close to reaching our goal of me doing a blind playthrough and video on OneShot. Alternatively, if you'd like to get occasional sneak peeks at my videos and support the channel more consistently, consider supporting me on Patreon. Both options go a long way towards keeping this channel up and running and really help bring financial stability to my life. With all that said, please enjoy today's theory. Let's get the obvious clickbait out of the way. Ness is not in Undertale or Deltarune, at least not in the literal sense. It's fun to meme on this idea, but it's simply not true. These are different games in different universes that do not overlap. However, while Ness himself does not appear, there may be a character heavily inspired by him that does. Toby Fox has always been highly transparent about how influential Earthbound was on Undertale Undertale and Deltarune, and I think there's one character who checks more Ness boxes than anybody else. You've seen the thumbnail, you know who I'm talking about. I think Des is heavily based on Ness, and the consequences for this are what I wish to discuss. But first, let's prove just how similar these characters are. We'll start with a quick rundown of Ness's attributes. Ness is a teenage human boy whose primary weapon is a baseball bat, and his his main armor is a baseball hat. He also possesses psychic powers. He is very brave, cheerful, and makes friends easily. He has a father who cares a lot about him and manages his son's finances, but is always away on business. He also has a stay-at-home mother who is very supportive of his adventures. Ness has a younger sister named Tracy who is very pleasant and is responsible enough to hold down a job. And most notably, Ness leaves his hometown to go on a magical adventure to save the world. Let's compare all of that to Des. Des is believed to be a teen or young adult. She is a monster, presumably a deer of some kind, and she is referred to as a girl. She is known to use a wiffle bat, which is effectively a plastic baseball bat, and she's implied to play the guitar. She is also implied to exist in the Undertale reality, where she would have magical powers on account of being a monster. She would also have magical powers if she visited the Dark World in Deltarune. Given her enjoyment of sports, as well as her tendency to stick up for Noelle and even smack Chris around, it's possible that Des is something of a tomboy. Even so, her friendship with Chris and Asriel and her efforts to comfort Noelle suggest that she is at least a somewhat pleasant and kind person. Des has a mother who likely cares about her, although she's a rather cold and distant figure who is often busy running the town. Des's father is not known to have a job, so he may be a stay-at-home dad, and he's definitely the more kind and supportive of her parents. Des also has a younger sister named Noelle, who is very smart, kind, sweet, and responsible. The location of Des is currently unknown, with the implication being that she is missing. This could mean that she ran away from home and is no longer living in the hometown, although where she went and why she left are currently unknown. When looked at side by side, the similarities between Ness and Des are pretty blatant. 
didn't. Their names are literally one letter apart, they both love baseball, they both have supernatural powers, and while Des is a girl, she's described in a very tomboyish way. In fact, given the way their parents are characterized, it could be argued that Des and her family are all gender-swapped and species-swapped versions of Ness and his family. They both have one parent who is an absent professional, one parent who is a homemaker, and one younger sibling who is supportive and responsible. Admittedly, Noelle and Tracy are both girls, so the gender swap angle doesn't work perfectly, but they are both blonde, young, responsible women who wore ribbons in their hair as children. It's also possible that Des has black hair like Rudy, just as Ness does. Also, the gender swap angle may still be intact if you argue that Noelle is transgender, which is an idea with more evidence than you would expect. I won't get into it here, but there's pills in an unused version of her bedroom, and she's designed in a way very reminiscent of white-tailed deer, of which only the males have antlers. It's unknown if Noelle's mother has antlers, and this line from Sands almost seems to imply Des does not have antlers, which lends credence to this line of thought. Also, this is a Toby Fox game, so, you know, it wouldn't be the strangest reveal. Regardless, both Ness and Des then leave their hometowns during the events of their respective games, so the similarities between them are pretty numerous. However, there were some areas where they didn't perfectly match up. Des plays the guitar, but Ness is not known to play any instrument. We are likely to learn the names of both of Des's parents, while the names of Ness's parents remain a mystery. Ness went on an adventure to save the world, whereas we don't know why or how Des disappeared. There's also the question of Des's dark world design. Ness only wears one outfit, so what would be the inspiration for her other design. Rest assured, I have answers to these questions. This is where we get to one of the more interesting branches of this theory. You see, there are two other notable characters who I believe were inspirations for Des. The first is Ninten. For those who don't know, Ninten was the protagonist of Mother 1, which was the game that came before Earthbound. He is so similar to Ness that the creator left it open to fan interpretation how they were connected or if they were potentially the same person. And from Ninten, we find a few more noteworthy additions to the similarity chart. Ninten has younger sisters who wear their hair in pigtails, just as Noelle did when she was younger. Ninten has a love for the electric guitar, just as Des does for the acoustic. And perhaps most notably of all, we actually know the name of Ninten's mother. And this was the detail that really got me excited. Do you know what the name of Des's mother is? The mayor of the hometown? We don't know for certain, but it's believed to start with the letter C, as evidenced by this letter sent to Asgore. And given that the entire Holiday family is named after Christmas stuff, it's believed that Des's mother is called Carol. This would align with Christmas carols while also just being a regular name. And can you guess what the name of Ninten's mother is? If you guessed Carol, then you're absolutely right. Given Ninten and Ness's similarities, it makes sense that Toby would draw from both when designing his own Ness-inspired character. Of course, he'd also want to make some changes to his original character in order to spin them into something unique. This, I suspect, was his motivation for swapping the gender, species, and role of Des. Ness was the protagonist and a human boy, while Des is a side character and a monster girl. However, there's one big addition to Des that does doesn't match Ness or Ninten. Des is missing. As such, the question becomes, how do we tie that back to the Mother series? Well, as it just so happens, Toby Fox has already written his own Earthbound fanfiction in which Ness goes missing. That's right, we're going full game theory on this one. Let's talk about the Earthbound Halloween hack. This bizarre little fan game was made by Toby Fox, and it follows the original characters from Earthbound going on a strange journey. The game is something Toby Fox has tried to distance himself from, although it's still a very worthwhile resource for us. Why? Because it gives us further insight into the themes and concepts Toby Fox is interested in exploring. One such idea that we know Toby was interested in was 
this. Ness is completely absent from this game. We don't know how or why, but he's not here, and you instead play as a character from Brandish, a completely different game series. As such, thanks to this, we now know that the idea of having Ness be mysteriously absent from the story is something Toby has been thinking about for a while. It stands to reason that this idea may have later been integrated into Des and her story. This also conveniently ties one of her seemingly unique traits right back to Ness. Ness was absent in the Halloween hack, Des is absent in Deltarune. But that's not all. You see, I know what you're thinking. Ness is a hero who saved the world by going on a magical adventure. Isn't that pretty different from Des, who is just a normal girl? That would be an issue for this comparison if it weren't for my last Des video. As you may recall, I theorized in my Skies Forever Blue theory that the girl from that video provides some hints as to the fate of Des. By the end, I concluded that Des did in fact go on a quest to save the world, just like this girl and just like Ness. The only difference was, instead of traveling around the world, Des went to a new world. A dark world, and in that dark world, she attempted to find a method to stop the roaring. Feel free to check out that video for more details, but TLDR, I believe the evidence already leads us to believe that Des was a hero intent on saving the world, which makes the Ness similarities even more numerous. But that's not all. If Des went to the dark world, then that would mean she'd have a new design in dark world, and as you recall from my previous video, I've already theorized what that design would look like. At the time, I guessed that she would wear an outfit similar to that of the girl in the music video, namely a pink and white dress with a big ribbon in her hair. But upon further research, I've now realized that there's an earthbound character who matches this description perfectly. This is Paula. She is the female companion of Ness, and is the character I think Toby drew inspiration from when writing the Dark World narrative of Des. Design-wise, Paula also wears a pink and white dress with a bow in her hair, but more important is her story. Paula's story begins with her being imprisoned by a villain. As a result, she has to use her psychic powers to call out to Ness, asking him to come and rescue her. This this is very similar to Des, who I've theorized has been trapped in some sort of dark world. And what has she been doing in said dark world? She has been leaving messages in the code calling out for help. This idea of blending some of Paula's attributes into Des in order to further distinguish her from Ness makes perfect sense, and it further strengthens the strings connecting Des to the Mother series. Now, at this point, everyone who is going to buy this Des Earthbound connection has already bought it, and I can't do much to convince the rest of you. However, regardless of whether you believe this theory or not, all of you are likely thinking the same same thing. So what? Maybe Des is inspired by Ness, Ninten, and Paula. Toby loves Earthbound, so it's not a big reach, but why does it matter? What does this revelation tell us about Deltarune even if it is true? The answer, my dear viewers, is everything. I began this analysis as a way of making a somewhat silly but ultimately sincere theory about the inspirations behind Des as a character. But in the process of analyzing Undertale, Deltarune, Earthbound, and the Halloween hack, I believe I've unlocked the door. I have had a major revelation. I now understand this web of stories in a way I've never understood it before. Several of my older theories now have glaring flaws, and several others now have humongous potential. Analyzing deaths was fun, but the real boon was how this helped me understand Toby Fox. And with this newfound insight, I do believe 
believe I have all the pieces necessary to tackle a much bigger fish. A missing hero. A taciturn protagonist who is out of place. A time machine that went horribly wrong. A multiverse of alternate realities and parallel stories. And at the heart of it all, a mad scientist. Everything is sliding into place. All the inspirations, characters, and projects have been building towards one climactic theory. A theory that answers some of the oldest mysteries in Toby Fox history, while also explaining plot points that you never even thought to question. What is Sans? Who is Papyrus? Where do the prophecies come from? Why does the Earth refuse to die? And how did he pull it all off? It's time to take on the big boy. It's time for Gaster. Or to be more precise, it's time for Gaster's multiverse plan. A theory I will be showcasing in a future video. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little theory about the inspirations behind Des as a character. I've been trying to push myself to get more videos out per month, so I hope this didn't feel like I was sacrificing quality for quantity. I think this video stands on its own, but I look forward to hearing what y'all have to say. And I also look forward to hearing what you think of that cliffhanger from my Gaster Theory. I've got a lot of projects on my plate, so I don't know when that video will go live, but I hope y'all are looking forward to it. Regardless, my throat is shot from doing that epic voice thing that I just did, so I'm gonna have to wrap things up. My sincere thanks go out to my patrons for financially contributing to this channel. A special shout out goes to E-Roll, Stephanie Klein, Suit Number One, Aspen Frost, and Leo Dragon Tamer. An extra special shout out goes to Super CKX7 for supporting me on the Ralsei tier. And finally, a huge shout out goes to Riff6 for being the only big shot willing and able to support me on the Spampton tier. You are all instrumental in keeping me and this channel afloat, and I will always be sincerely grateful for your support. Thank you very, very much. And with that, it's about time that I signed off. Like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, have a fantastic day.